house plants are something that many people may have or may not have, and we're going to go over several of them that would be recommended in order for you to uh, have in your home in order to better uh, purify the air and uh, make life a little easier for you. So definitely house plants do add something to your home. And one I want to talk about here is aloe, and it's great for increasing the oxygen in your home, and it can absorb the carbon dioxide and the carbon monoxide and you can replace kind of replace air purifiers with an aloe plant Um, you won't have obviously the same air circulation but aloe plants do help absorb that the toxicity in the air a bit Um, and so what but one thing I want to mention about aloe is aloe juice if you grow aloe you want to juice it you can if you drink it it becomes a natural laxative and it also helps your digestion. So there's it's kind of like a twofer with that plant. You have a house plant, but you also can um, you can drink it essentially, juice the the uh, what's it called, the leaves, the uh, plant, the plant juice. Yeah, that's what. It, so what what is another thing and what another house plant in which would be recommended possibly if you uh, are going to look in the avenue of house plants? So this the one is another one is the ficus, and this plant does not need a lot of light, which a lot of people like because that way you can put it in a corner. Um, but the leaves might be poisonous, so if you have pets or small children that might eat the leaves, then that's a little bit more, uh, not exactly the most friendly plant. Uh, ficus tree, trees are common in the home, but they can be they can be a little bit finicky, so you would have to kind of look up how to care for a ficus. Uh, ficus, uh, larger plant, I believe, is it not? It can get larger, yeah. That's correct. Uh, let's look at ivy. Ivy is something many people have and maybe are not even aware that it is an ivy plant that they can have in their home. Uh, but this is kind of, if you're going to pick one, this is probably the go-to plant. So ivy would be definitely a good bathroom plant. I know that I've, you sometimes you'll see it in bathrooms of professional buildings. And the reason for that is is because it will remove feces particles um, from the air and 60% of the toxins in the air. It's also something that looks nice because it does drape around, it grows. So if you have an area where maybe you want to have it drape, and as it grows, continues to grow, you can make it look nice, not just a plant, but also kind of an interior design element. Now, with any of these plants, you want to figure out the recommended light requirements. You just can't stick them in a corner of a bathroom, as you indicated with the ivy, and uh, it'd be dark most of the year. So you want to be able to uh, keep that in mind as well. Now, spider plant is a really cool plant, uh, and it does a lot of benefits here. A lot of these these plants, all of these plants, have a certain level of cleansing, uh, toxicity removal capabilities uh, in your home. So if you've ever, it's probably the most popular of the um, easiest to grow hanging plants or trailing plants. So it's got the trails and the hang, hanging. So if you have like an upper corner somewhere, you can grow it. It does it does photosize under very minimal light. And it does also absorb the toxins from air as carbon monoxide, formaldehyde, gasoline, and styrene. Now, spider plant, it's named because it has the characteristics of when it's draping and cascading over the pot, like little spiders uh, hanging down. So that's where that name comes from. So then there's the snake plants. It's called the San Sanservia. I think I said that right. And it's a hardy indoor plant that you can grow just about anywhere. And it is a great house plant. I think it's also called mother-in-law's tongue. The way it shoots up, I think that's kind of the the uh, the not so well known name, or maybe maybe well known name for it. Um, and it's also nice because it can perform photosynthesis under minimal light as well. <clears throat> and that's why these are all good house plants because yes, they do need a little bit of light, but it's not like a tomato plant where it needs full sun eight hours a day uh, in your home. Uh, there are different plants that are that are house plants that do require that kind of uh, requirement of light. And it does produce a lot of oxygen, especially at night. So that's something that is is uh, fun and yeah. So it's you want the oxygen. That's another reason to have house plants is one, it brings some green provides oxygen, it filters the air, and it's just nice to have around. Um, and some of these plants, like I have a plant on my desk, it's called, I think it's called a 
Calithia, uh-huh. and what it does is it open and it opens and closes. The leaves actually roll up and then op- open up. Right, kind of like the palms of your hand, more open than to more closed. Now, to, to most gardeners or vegetable gardeners, if you see that in a plant, that means the plant is requiring water or it's very stressed. In this instance, that is the characteristics of the natural growth cycle of that plant. Right, it's called the living, they call it the living plant because how you can see the, the process and what it is, it's just for light is all it is. And actually when I first started noticing that, I thought it needed more water and then it, I looked it up and then I realized that it's doing that because it's absorbing light and then it's closing up to kind of go to it, it's, it, it's got enough light, it's done it, what it, it needs prefers, to. It prefers, yeah, the morning light. So um, <laughs> it's kind of a neat plant. It freaks my coworkers out sometimes. They're like, your plant moves throughout the day. And I'm like, yes, that is what it does. That's uh, kind of one way to maybe keep the coworkers away from you when they have a plant. you have a plant that's moving around on your desk. Right. Uh, leaves, not physical pot moving <laughs> with legs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's a fun plant. And then there's also peace lilies. Peace lily is another very common house plant, and they are easy to grow. Most of the house plant, most of the varieties can grow about uh, 16 inches high. is about the tallest, uh, but they are uh, they can be larger if cultivated and taken care of. Again, it removes uh, uh, toxins from the air, and it also can r- remove um, other bad things in the air, not just the toxins. Also creates a Oxygen creates oxygen for you in your home. Now, in the cultivated period, it can get up to six foot tall. So it can be a very large plant if you allow it to get to that height um, in, in your home. That could be interesting. Very, yeah, six foot tall plant. Now, some people have these in the corner of the right, family right. room uh, yeah. next to a large window uh, that uh, will do quite well. A lot of people like peace lilies or they're giving us gifts at times because... Because of the, the peace element, mm-hmm. so there's there's that also. Um, another thing, cool thing about aloe, and I don't oh, know. Going back to the aloe plant here for yeah, a moment. Yeah, okay. I kind of missed this earlier, um, and I don't know why we don't grow an aloe plant. We had one. You can put it on burns. Right. What, yeah. hap- what happened to our aloe plant? I don't. I, it didn't make it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember us having an aloe. We had plant. one. Okay. Well. Um, so we'll, we'll discuss that aspect later. You can uh, use it as an alternative to mouthwash. So what you would do is you can. Um, put it on your gums and then kind of like move it around and then spit it out. We're not chewing it up, or, or, or no, like put it on your gums and help can help it can help relieve bleeding or swollen gums. But you don't want to consume it as a like a uh, you don't want to swallow it. I mean, you can you can consume it, but okay. you probably just want to since you're using it as a mouthwash. Mm-hmm. Mouthwash uh, usually to remove like toxins mm-hmm. or grossness on your teeth and gums. You'd want to spit that out, yeah. But it's definitely um, a very useful plant. So if you want to grow aloe, and there's many varieties mm-hmm. in which of, of aloe that you can get. I remember, you know, growing up, we had an aloe plant, and when we got a burn, we would take and, and break part of the leaf structure off, and then use that the the oils or the juices in the aloe plant to rub on the the wound of the burn. Right. So there's there's that as well, and you don't have to. Go far to find a house plant. They sell them usually at bit most big box stores, grocery stores, grocery stores, all sorts of places. You have so, to look pretty hard not to be able to find one in your area. Right, but if you do want to pick out the right house plant for you, you might want to go to your local independent garden center that sells the house plants, and that way you can always ask questions, read read labels. They might have a larger variety, um, so that way you can check that out and find your ideal house plant. Well, for more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.